Waters? Here. Moore? Here. O'Kane? Here. Shaner? Scott? Here. Can we stand for a moment of silent prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ron, come on up. We're going to interview you for the active transportation. You've been here before. We appreciate your service and tell us why you want to keep it up. Well, I think I, I bring some to the uh, a good experience to the table as a cyclist and I utilize the, the trails in Sioux City and I can see and uh, have road um, areas that need work and uh, you know I, I give a good perspective on some things that could be better and things that are good now and I think it's, it's a good uh, having me on the board is it I'm give good information and I'm out riding the trails not just driving by them so I'm on them so I know what's good and what's bad Gets you out of the house and keeps you active. Good for you. Absolutely. Question, Ron. <clears throat> no, I think it's an important perspective, and I really appreciate you and keeping that group active. I think that that's really great, and especially what you guys do for um, education in our community about bicycle safety. I think that you're seeing, in my opinion, um, this council and really our entire community is kind of rallying behind the notion behind getting outdoors and improving our trails as best we can. And Matt and his team have been great with trail connectivity and things like that. The mayor and I were commenting on plywood trail and stuff like that. So I think the future is bright with that. And I really appreciate your perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Ron. Okay. Next is the uh, art center board of trustees and Kellogg. Um, hi. hi, tell us a little bit about why you want to serve. Uh, so I actually served a partial term, uh, I think it did 18 months, um, and I think the Art Center is a very important aspect of our community. Uh, we have a great arts representation here, and I just want to be involved and help it be the best it can be. That explains why, Ann, it seems like it was just yesterday you were interviewing. Right? No, it was very short. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you're doing a great job, and I'm great. really glad you reapplied. Great. So yeah, thank, well, I enjoy it. Thank you. Right. So, thank you. Thank you, Ann. Richard Yates. Richard, go ahead and go to that microphone it'd be easy, if it's easier for you. Either what? Yeah, this one's either one's as easy as for you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to serve. So I, uh, my name is Richard Yates. I uh, am an instructor at uh, Briarcliff University, where I teach graphic design. I've taught there for the past five years. Uh, before that, I was teaching uh, graphic design and arts at Morningside University. Um, and uh, I'd like to, uh, art is a big part of uh, any thriving community. And I'd like to just make sure uh, that I can do my part to help keep it accessible to all of us as citizens. Questions? Well, we, were, we were talking about your application before you got here. and. Uh, one of the things we mentioned is that you now teach at Briar Cliff, and we were wondering what made you come to your senses. <laughs> you don't have to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. It would yeah, thank definitely you. be good to get a different perspective. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they give me a hard time because we get a lot of Morningside professors and, and mm -hmm. staff members that want to serve and, yep. and hold different positions. So they and were, they were welcoming. Um, yeah. yeah, they were definitely welcoming some Briarcliff applicants. So You're very it's welcome. good to see you, Rich, very much. Thanks for no, your no, application. Thanks. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll let You'll do know. great. Thank you. Thank you. Peggy Long. Inclusive Sioux City. Evening all. Hello. Hi. Peggy. Hi. Um, renewing my appointment with the Inclusive Advisory Committee. Um, very involved in the Asian community and I feel like renewing my appointment will do great and plus I also do a ton for our community as well. Questions? Peggy, thank you so much for getting, I think you were on for one year already? Yes. Okay. My or, second term. Yeah, it's your second term. Thank yeah. you for re-upping. So appreciate it. You're already so involved with the diverse community. You're growing that side of town. It's, it's great. I appreciate it so much. And I've enjoyed a lot of the festivals and the activities that have gone on over there. I'm so glad you joined us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Thank Appreciate you. It. You're welcome. Thank you. Parks and Rec, Al Sturgeon. Your your references are a little, or one of them at least. Well, it. both of them are a little suspect. suspect. I tell you yeah. what, but we'll try not to hold those against you. I figured I'd apply anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Roll the dice. <laughs> you know, I've lived in Sioux City all my life. Quality of life in a community is directly related to the park system. If you want to say, see one of the best accomplishments <clears> this <throat> council and city's ever done, it's the riverfront. And if you would have looked at that riverfront 40 years ago, it'd be hard to believe that it could turn into the asset that it has. And one of my reasons for in getting involved in this, in addition to the fact that it's nonpartisan, is that I want you to take a look at that Floyd River Valley right now. Can you imagine a more hostile environment? There's two low flood dams, or those low head flood dams. They have one purpose today. They kill people. They have killed people. The rest of the Floyd River Valley is full of these huge rocks that are as inhospitable as you can possibly get. It shouldn't have to be that way. That whole Floyd River Valley could be something very impressive. And I keep talking about it, and I saw this opportunity to come up, and I thought maybe this is kind of a way to, to take a look at that. So Good. other sure. than that, I'm a newcomer to the community. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Questions. Al, thanks for making the application, and I also want to thank you for all the years of service you've given oh, to citizens. You. Well, in, thank you because in your practice, as I have always told people, there is no more thankless job than either running for city council or the school board. The mayor should know he's he's had both. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is paradise compared to the school board. But <laughs> thank you, Al. Thank you very thanks, much. Thanks, Al. Al. We're going to go to the consent agenda, which is items 3 through 16D. <clears throat> Consider those items to pass unanimously by, unless a separate roll call is requested by a council member. If you want to speak on the item, please come up as I read it. If you want to speak on an item not under the agenda, please come up under citizen concern. But remember always to state your name and address for the record and then provide your statement. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. The three is a reading of the City Council Minutes of December 11th and 12th, 2023. Four is the Mayor's Youth Commission 2023 Accomplishments Presentation. It's all yours, Mayor's Youth Commission. One of our favorite days of the year, right, yep. Mary? My name is Mary Coaster, and I am the director of the Mayor's Youth Commission and the Sioux City Young Ambassadors. We have a group from our Executive Council here today to talk to you. They will first introduce themselves, and then they will tell you some of the accomplishments that we have done in the year of 2023. Hi, everyone. My name is Grace Hodge. I go to North High, and I'm the Mayor of the Mayor's Youth Commission. Hi, I'm Adelaide Gassaway. I am Mayor Pro Tem um, and Mayor Co-Mayor Pro Tem um, of Mayor's Youth Commission. Yeah. Hi, my name is Marie McGowan. I'm from Healan, and I am a Co-Mayor Pro Tem. Hi, I'm Caleb on Hayden. I'm from East High, and I am a project manager. Hi, I'm Audrey Raveling. I'm from North High, and I am a hospitality director. My name is Layla Lilly. I'm a sophomore at North High School, and I'm the legal director. Hi, my name is Benhan Gassi. I'm a senior at East High, and I am the diversity, equity, and inclusion director. Hi again. My name is Grace Hodge. I'm a <laughs> senior at North High, and I serve as the mayor of the Sioux City Mayor's Youth Commission. And now members of the executive council would like to present MIC's information. Hi again, I'm Adelaide Gassaway and uh, co-mayor pro tem, um, and I go to North High, and I'm a senior right now. Uh, the mission um, of the Mayor's Youth Commission is to explore, communicate, and provide for the needs, problems, and issues, um, and activities affecting us in the city's youth. The goals of Mayor's Youth Commission are for youth to make a positive impact in our community and feel valued, to encourage youth to develop into their full potential, to hold leadership sessions for youth to increase their knowledge and skills, and to participate in community service and activities, and to have youth feel like they have made a positive impact in society. 
And our 2023 adult advisors are Anais Adame from the Siouxland District Health, Christopher Courtney from Siouxland Cares Community, and he is the community coordinator, Sergeant Jim Cunningham, Sioux City Police Department liaison, Linda Ellis, community volunteer, Mary Coaster, Siouxland Cares Youth Services Coordinator, Rachel Ludgren, Siouxland Cares Executive Director, and Louise Paskey, who is a parent volunteer. The 2023 Marriage Youth Committee Executive Council, there are currently 23 members, and all of these members have served one year on Youth Commission or were previously a young ambassador, completed an application, and interviewed for the position. Our 2023 membership for the general is 64 Marriage Youth Commission members, 79 young ambassadors, which makes a total of 143 participants. All these members come from Bishop Helan, East High, North High, West High, Sioux and Christian, and Vibe Academy. Young Ambassadors is, oh, I'm Audrey Raveling. I'm from North High, I'm a junior, and I'm Hospitality Director. Young Ambassadors is a recognition program for students grades seven through fourth who display good character. All nominated students receive a free Young Ambassadors t-shirt, a gift certifi certificate from Brook People provided by MYC and public recognition. From the nominations, 31 students were selected to be mentored by members of Sioux City Mayor's Youth Commission. I'm Layla Lilly and I'm the legal director. Executive council members provided an orientation for 30 new MYC members. The top concerns of the new members were poverty and homelessness, food insecurity, drugs, alcohol, vaping, bullying, social media technology, cell phone obsession, and mental health issues. Members contributed 2,920 volunteer hours to our community. We also volunteered at 67 different events. Our goal is to make a positive impact in our community by increasing our volunteer hours. Thank you all. The Mayor's Youth Commission would like to thank all of you for your support of our organization and for giving us the opportunity to serve our community. And we invite you to at attend and participate in any of our meetings and activities. We are happy to answer any of your questions now. Thank you. Question and doubt. Thank you. Or comments, go ahead. Yeah, great <laughs> update, you. great report. Always is, and it's just outstanding what you all can do together. You achieve a lot for this community and we really appreciate that. Thank you. I, I hear all the time from other organizations that you guys volunteer your time for. Um, it, it seems like I always see the maroon shirt <coughs> somewhere at some event. What was your favorite event over this past year? I think the wiffle ball is always my favorite. Okay. I love it. <laughs> Who won the wiffle ball game? Was that us? Did we? We did win. Oh, we win. City of Sioux City. 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 If these guys won, that would be the weakest field you've ever seen. In right, for sure. <laughs> I want to hey, raise. I the ball. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Thank do a you great for job. You, you do incredible work. Make us all proud. Five is a resolution appointing new members to the Youth Commission. Now the administ administration of the, administering the oath of office. And I'm gonna have Dan help with the more mayor pro tem this year, is that okay? I would first like to talk to you about our new members. I would like you to do that. We have a great number of new members this year, 49. That's the most we've had in a while. Um, of our applicants, 38 are female and 11 are male. Ethnicity. African American is two, Asian American is three, Caucasian is 39, Caucasian Asian American one, Caucasian Native American one, Latino Hispanic three. They come from five different schools, Bishop Helan, East, North, Sulan Christian, and West. And so um, we would like you to approve this list uh, today, and we will have an orientation for them in January, which we would like to invite all of you to come to that to make a comment. And how many are from East? I have to talk to the incoming Okay, president. here we go. <laughs> Helan is 35, North is 4, Siouxland Christian is 4, West is 5, and East is 1. 
got your work cut out for you, Madam President. Okay? <laughs> Thank <laughs> no you. Doubt. All right. All right. I want Kayla Von Hayden to come to the microphone. Please come on, Dan. You can. <clears throat> want to hear. Raise your right hand, please. Do you, Kayla Von Hayden, solemnly swear that you will faithfully and impartially, to the best of your ability, execute the position of the Office of Mayor of the City of Sioux City Mayor's Youth Commission during the year 2024, and to the best of your ability, uphold, promote, and support the ideas, activities, and mission of the Sioux City Mayor's Youth Commission by serving as a positive role model, leader, and the voice for MYC? If so, answer, I do. I do. Congratulations. Thank Good you. luck this year. We'll help you all. Thank you. Audrey. Hello, Audrey. I'm really proud to be doing this, and I wanted to let the Mayor's Youth Commission one more comment. You do make a difference. You truly make a difference. So are you ready? Okay. Uh, Audrey Raveling, please raise your right hand. Do you, Audrey Raveling, solemnly swear that you will faithfully and impartially, to the best of your ability, execute the position of the Office of Mayor Pro Tem of the Sioux City Mayor's Youth Commission during the year 2024, and to the best of your ability, uphold, promote, and support the ideas, activities, and mission of the Sioux City Mayor's Youth Commission, by serving as a positive role model, leader, and voice for MYC? If so, answer, I do. Congratulations. Okay, we'll go on to number six, which is the resolution authorizing the utilities director to execute the required EPA, Eco Engineers, and the Energy Authority documents to the Renewable Fuels Project at the Wastewater Treatment Plant. Seven is a motion authorizing the city staff to enter negotiations with Paseo Technologies for a mobile fare pay system for the transit system. Does that mean we won't be taking any cash after this? Because some people that are old still like cash. We don't like cards. Mike Colette, Assistant City Manager, yes, we will still be accepting cash. Okay. Items 8A through 8D are motions accepting and proving annual reports. A is a Historic Preservation Commission, B is a Public Museum, C is the Yamanashi City Sister City Committee, and D is the Inclusive Sioux City Advisory Committee. Nine are actions adopting construction documents. A is a resolution adopting the plans and specs for the Court Street Section 130 Curb and Sidewalk Improvement Project. B is a resolution adopting plans and spec for the Convention Center Call Wall Panel Replacement Project. Ten are actions relating to agreements and contracts. A is a resolution approving a contract to Bainbridge Construction for the 30. 41st Street Sanitary Sewer Improvement Project. Gordon, in, um, in light of the announcement today that we can finally announce about improvements and projects that are starting to occur out there, do these guys understand the absolute unbelievable importance of this project? Because we're going to be in for trouble if that project is not done on time. There are time limits on this project with liquidated damages. We have not been able to meet with them yet because we have to sign them off to contract. Well, when you meet with them and then it's incumbent that we have regular meetings making sure that that project is rolling as it should. Okay. We typically do every other week for all our projects, major projects set up. Okay. I just, this one affects it's got a down yeah there's effect. just a lot riding on it for, for sure. sure yeah exactly so okay all right gordon fair city engineer thank you gordon. he is a resolution approving a consulting services agreement with dgr engineering for the pier street water main replacement project c is a resolution approving a billing services agreement and business associate addendum with ems management and consultants <clears throat> for emergency medical ambulance transport billing 
D is a resolution approving change order number one to the contract with Rock Solid Trail Contracting for the Cone Park Natural Services Trail Project. E is a resolution awarding a surface provider agreement to Eco Engineers to provide a quality assurance program audit at the wastewater treatment plant. F is a resolution approving a consulting services agreement with Baker Tilly for the classification and compensation study project. I'd like to pull that for a vote, please. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Shaner? Aye. Scott? No. Waters? Aye. I think that comes <clears throat> Bob, but anyway. G is a resolution approving a post-construction stormwater management plan maintenance agreement and easement with McGee and McGee for detention basin property at 4501 Gordon Drive. Um, the, a lot of this lot is just asphalt cuttings. Now, I don't have a problem with it. I'm the one guy that probably doesn't. But when did we start approving that planning and zoning? Mr. Madsen, somebody? Chris, do you know if that's approved? Can people do that now on a car lot? Because they never could before. That was approved through DRC, correct. Chris Madsen, city planner. Okay, well that's a dramatic change in city policy. And I'm not sure used car lot, that's a good change. We are exploring used car lots and our standards regarding that. We did just present to the Planning and Zoning Commission last week to get guidance on changes to that ordinance. But they're already parking cars out there. So it has been approved. Correct, their site plan was approved. Well, somebody's gonna have to show me, because in your ordinances, you didn't allow that. Because I'm the guy that argued about parking trailers that would never move down there at, at uh, Thermal King, I remember you guys wanted all concrete and we said they could get by with that, but now all of a sudden you're going to allow that surface and I just, I want to, okay. We can get you the site plan that we approved. I don't care what your site plan is, your ordinance doesn't read that way. That's my point. But they're already doing it? Done, they've got cars parked. I don't have a, I'm not, I just want to know when we changed. So you can get me that, you and work with Nicole, but. H is a resolution approving a post-construction stormwater management plan and maintenance agreement and easement with Briarcliff University for a detention base in the property at 3303 Rebecca Street. Mayor. Yes. I need to abstain on that item, conflict of interest. I is a resolution approving first amendments to the development and minimum assessment agreements to Floyd River Flats. The property is 130 Nebraska. 11 are applications relating to personnel. A is a resolution amending the authorized personnel complement position classification manual and salary schedule by approving an updated job description for word processing supervisor and reclassifying a lead word processor to word processing supervisor. B is a resolution fixing the salary of the city manager. C is a resolution fixing the salary of the city attorney. 12 are actions authorizing payment. A is a resolution authorizing payment to Subserco for the West 3rd Street and West Street intersection improvement project. I need to abstain conflict of interest. B is a resolution authorizing payment to RP constructors for the LaPlante Avenue water <coughs> main replacement project. C a resolution approving fund transfers for November. D is a motion approving claims and total expenses and receipts for November. 13 are actions relating to property. A is a resolution scheduling a hearing on proposed amendment number four to the amended and restated Donner Park Urban Renewal Plan, the property at 5701 Alhanes Drive. B is a resolution proposing to sell the vacated Harris Street, Granville Street, and alley adjacent to 3100 Harris Street. Petitioner is Jason Mann. Items 13, 13C through 13L are resolutions inviting proposals for the lease of land and scheduling hearings. C is a property at 2404 Hawkeye Drive to head of the league. D is a property at 49 proposals for the sale of land in the combined Floyd River urban renewal area, announcing the intent to accept the proposal of Siouxland Splash, Splash <clears throat> scheduling a hearing, the property at 3820 Highway 75 North. Matt, where, where's the, com, the 
the soccer complex in Riverside. What's happening there? While he's coming up here, Heidi, I need to abstain on 13A for a conflict of interest, please. Matt Salvatore, Parks and Recreation Director. Uh, we're we're kind of waiting on that one. Uh, we need some direction from the council through the upcoming budget process to, and then and then that one can come back if if that's the direction we receive. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that, Mayor. <clears throat> on these other proposals for lease, well, the An awarding a purchase order to Burt Gurney and Associates for a Fairbanks rotating pump assembly. B is a resolution awarding a purchase order to McQueen Equipment for a 2024 Vactor 2100i combination sewer cleaner. C is a resolution awarding a purchase order to the Thermal Sci Scientific Portable <laughs> Analytic Instruments for a TrueNARC de detection system. 15 are applications for beer and liquor license. 16 are boards and commission and committee minute minutes. Anyone to be heard on any of those items? We're voting electronically. Passes 5-0. Recommendations of planning and zoning. 17 is a hearing and ordinance amending chapter 25.05 of the municipal code entitles by development to provide an extension of the interim sign ordinance. PNZ recommends approval. I guess I'll move it, but I'm oh. not understanding why. Go I'll, ahead. Well, I'll second it, and I'd like to hear Go from ahead. both the chair and from Chris Hansen. Chair sure, Andrew Gleiser, yeah, thank, thank chair you. of planning and zoning. Um, I guess, what are you? What is your question? Just a summary of what what this is, just in simplified terms for me. Um, it, it was kind of a a look at what we we currently had for signage around town. Um, the possibilities of additional signage or not allowing signage going into certain areas. And we, we looked at different spacing between signs and as signs go to um, illuminated signs that where the boards can change every few minutes, um, just how we were gonna uh, govern those, so to speak. And uh, that's this is the plan that we came to agreements with with the help of city staff. This so those are the digital, the digital signs that the digital change. signs are part of this. So we're looking at square footage, though, of of those, or uh, not so much square footage as distance between them. The distance between them, from digital and the and the other sign type. The billboards, of correct, correct, correct. Normal different. billboards. There's not going to be any difference, though. You're going to make it all a thousand feet, according to what you're doing. Six hundred. How much? Six hundred. Chris, imagine planners. What's in planning and zoning came late in the game at, with a thousand feet. Correct. What's in front of you today is the extension of the interim sign ordinance, which is the moratorium on any new or <coughs> changed uh, off-premise signs or billboards. The planning and zoning commission at their meeting last week did vote on the proposed changes, and they did change that separation requirement to 600 feet. That would be before you on the January 8 meeting. So today is just the extension of the moratorium. Till when? March 31st of 2024. Okay, they're going to bring the changes back January 8th. Correct. Why would we wait till March 31st? To allow you time to review those changes. If you approve the ordinance that planning and zoning made a re well, recommendation well, Once we approve on. the ordinance, what, what is there to review? What then, am I missing? Today is only the extension of the moratorium. Yep. I get that, no, but if we approve it January 8th and then we have till March to review it, what's happening that I'm missing? If it's approved, we can modify that date. Correct. If the change that's coming before you on January 8th is approved, <clears throat> that would end the moratorium at that time. Oh, okay. Today we're just putting a date of March 31st to give you time to review that, the whole multiple hearing. So we have okay. up to March 8th Correct. that the moratorium could stay in effect. If we bring the changes to council, you want us to look at more changes. Right. If you defer it, we want to give you some time. Okay. But if that ordinance is approved, the moratorium would end before that date. Hopefully it won't take us out. Cross and T's and dot and I's. <laughs> and this <clears throat> stems from, or probably doesn't stem from, but it was a larger conversation we had at the joint meeting, if I remember correctly, right? We had the gentleman there, if I remember right, from Verde that wanted to talk through some of those. And we were talking about the problems with proximity because a lot of times, I mean, you look at whether it's the viaduct or otherwise, and then the ability for any new 
competitor or any new sign company to be able to enter the market really it would be difficult to be able to find that space right Is correct that, and it's going to continue to be difficult to find uh, we're not making it any easier to put up some yeah. to be honest with you it is, it is a challenge, and it's a challenge from this side of the table, too, thinking about, one, well, I'm sure what you guys were going through as far as your discussion, because you did, never want to allow a monopoly, right? You're not trying to encourage any one company to be able right. to monopolize that, but that's what sometimes happens when you have one company that was established here for so long and established so many billboards, and you know then they were bought out, which is you know fine, and that's business, but... Now, there isn't a lot of space to necessarily be had. I mean, unless with future expansion and different things, but. I, yeah, I think what threw me off the path, and I apologize, it was, was in the write-up in our homework, the motion that was made to go to 1,000 feet for both static and non-static billboards. Correct. During the November 28th meeting, that, that was the Planning and Zoning Commission vote. The meeting last week, they did change uh, after Verde did attend the meeting express their concern with that number uh, and they did change it back to 600. So that's what would come to us on the 8th. Correct. Just as a practical matter, the 600 feet, how, did, how do you determine 600 feet versus 1,000 or whether it's 700? Is there something about the, the blocks, the, how, how long the blocks are? or be Approximately two blocks and we did look at what other cities, what their requirements were and that was about the middle of what other cities were requiring. 1,000 was about the high end. Our re current requirement of 200 was at the low end. 600 was very much in the middle of all those different requirements. Okay, so that's about two blocks then. Right. That would be a part on 600 feet. Okay, thank and you. That was the, probably the biggest input to us is what other communities were doing around the area is what their distances were, so. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Alex that it does really present a problem to those who want to do new business in town because of all of the properties and the signs that are already owned, you know, by Verde as it is. So I don't know. Or even know. introduce competition. It's right. just so difficult to. Very difficult. I mean, the trouble with a monopoly is then you set the rate and there's nothing around it if you want to advertise that way. So. Thing when you, I don't never been to planning school. That's pretty obvious. You guys didn't have to have me say that to figure it out. But there must be a course called the Lady Bird Johnson course, where you learn how to get rid of every sign in a community <coughs> you can. We're going to have a problem in this community with the viaduct. There's a lot of signs on the viaduct. I personally don't find those offensive. I actually no, I look at them and and read them, mm -hmm. and and appreciate businesses but even at your 600 feet are they going to be able to replace how far apart are those spread now that'll probably fall more on the dot than it would no not if they build them all not if they come off that bipod if you come off the viaduct and you're not on dot right away if you buy from the person below and put up a L-shaped, I'm guessing that's not going to come under DOT. I don't know. I don't think it does, does it? It's only primary highway, so only the interstates that the DOT would review. Right. That's what, so right. that's what I'm saying. How far are most of the signs spread today on the viaduct? Anybody know that answer? Because we shouldn't. They're definitely yeah, we not looked at the, We looked at the joint meeting. We, we talked about that. Yeah. We didn't well, think it would be was that, back up. No, yeah, you're fine. Was that grandfathered in, or once they come down, they can't go back up? I think that's what we were right. told is once they're taken down for the viaduct, they yeah. cannot be allowed back up. Mayor, remember I brought that up to you and that's where I got it from. I couldn't remember. Okay, well, I don't understand that because you're, you're taking a lot of ability for people to advertise off this, Maybe. out of this community, which, which only what we're doing for the average business is driving the price of outdoor advertising way up mm -hmm. because those are going to become so much more valuable. And I don't understand why we have such a problem with billboards. I guess I, it, I don't know. We weren't looking specifically at the viaduct. We were looking at the... But the problem is you got to look at the community. Mm -hmm. 
because there's lots of zones these guys don't want any signs in. May, and I under, maybe understand that better, but on a high traffic street, I don't have a problem. I don't care. I drive Floyd Boulevard going home two, three nights a week. It doesn't offend me at all to have a billboard on my way home. But we're pretty much going to be doing away with this kind of stuff with this order. Those viaduct ones, we may have to grandfather those back in. You can review that. I don't remember what the distance is, but they're definitely not two blocks apart. No, that's, that's my point. I'm not I, I've looked at those for campaigning, and I've driven back and forth. And got that specific. I don't have the specific number. I know that during the planning and zoning meeting, Verde said they were comfortable with 600, but we can check that and see what that spacing is. And that's where it's difficult, you know, writing an ordinance or anything and having it affect the viaduct, but also having it affect, right. affect yeah. new or different areas in town where you probably don't want it every more than every two blocks or something. And I still have a problem with we just can't put a sign on a lot. Dr. Roach got banged up on Floyd Boulevard. All he put was Christian or Catholic radio station and we we give them, a, it's on hold until we decide this, but it just is mind boggling to me that people can put the trashiest signs in their front yard. And I think you know where I'm talking, Julie, and we can't do anything about it, but somebody puts a sign like that up there and we got to go tag them. It, well, we'll have time to work. It's through a fine it. I mean, you guys, uh, yeah, planning we'll and zoning is going to give us their proposal. <laughs> right. <laughs> until March we might need till March. Yeah, that's what trails. I was going to say. We might yeah. need till March 31st, actually, guys. So. Mm -hmm. do, you know, do you read much about how traffic safety comes into play on billboards and signage and digital signs? Is there much written on that as far as traffic safety? Or are we concerned about traffic safety or... Traditionally, that's one of the higher concerns, is correct, is traffic safety. What is the higher? Traffic safety in that regards to billboards, the high digital, yep. That people and will be gawking at them and it's distracting? Like, and you don't have it in front of you, but we used a lot of the DOT requirements when we formulated the code. But that so. all goes back to Lady Bird Johnson. She hated billboards and she wanted them off every highway in America. She couldn't, the wall drug signs all the way across this country just drove her nuts. And that's where it came from. You're too young to remember it. You're too young to remember it. I'm, I'm telling you, that's where it all started. And they can't. They won't be happy till they're all gone. Yeah. And, and President Lincoln had no problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wall Drug was there with him, but. <laughs> but, 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 but seriously, I think. Traffic, well, I don't it sounds like we're going to have some good discussion on this. I don't think traffic going study forward. Was, yeah. That's why we want to do yeah. extend more. And boring. that's great. Yeah, I mean, I hate the moratorium if there's people waiting in line for something new. Do you know if there is? I believe there's one out-of-town company that is working. Right, so we'll, we'll work as quickly think, as we and can. And we're working with them. There's a lot to cover, though, right? I think back in the day, though, traffic safety was not her priority. It was more of no, what, more she didn't what like looks that pretty on the and what looks nice and does it, does it look clean. I, I don't know. And I have actually heard that the electronic billboards are safer than the other ones, so I don't know. I'd like to see the stats on I'd that. like to see the stats on that, but... I don't think you're going to find stats on either one, but... Probably not. Go ahead and get that now that you've said that's... They don't keep those. We'll have to go to the museum and get Lady Bird Johnson. <laughs> so if we vote yes on this, it just, means we don't... Why would we have to do second and third? Because it's the moratorium. Because it, the moratorium date was passed into the ordinances, so it would need to be changed to extend it. Okay. okay. That's why. Currently, the moratorium would end on December 31st, so otherwise it would lapse then on that date. So we pass this, then we revisit the it on the... moratorium Correct. extension. Got you. Mm -hmm. How long have you been working on this? July. And the, and the guy that we spent all that money on planning our city didn't put anything in for this? We didn't alter the signed ordinance during that. We just moved well, you it did into on, the new... You did on my business and other... On-premise, some items were changed, correct. Did I miss it? Okay, I vote no. Everybody else votes yes. I'm... 
The moratorium, you're voting no? Yeah. Why? I'm, I'm ready to have it go away. We should Can we do our second pass third? the fine ordinance and get it over with. We've been. Well, first we have to agree on an ordinance to pass. I, I'm, you're not oh, going to you're, you're not going to convince oh, mayor. him. Oh, mayor. 18's a hearing and ordinance vacating a portion of the alley <laughs> block bounded by Dace Avenue. What's it? Uh, I'm, can, we, can we do a second and third? Second no. third reading? <laughs> oh, come on. Because <laughs> no. our rule is if anybody objects to it. Well, you're right. <laughs> then then they shouldn't. Okay. Oh, no. I don't want you to change. No, I know what you're saying because then people yeah. can apply for a sign. Go Please. ahead, make the motion. I'm oh. not going to vote for it, but so go there ahead. There are no objections from the others. No. no. I'll move second and third. Second. O'Kane. Aye. Shaner. 100% aye. Scott. 200% no. <laughs> Waters. Aye. Moore. Aye. Motion you need for second and third. So moved. I think Mr. Moore was supposed to say that. Not sure who does it. Who's what did you say? Motion. Motion. Second and second motion. Third. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. You moved it. You I'll need se a second. The, I'll second the motion for the second and third. Shaner. Aye. Scott. No. Water. <laughs> Almost had you. <laughs> Aye. Moore. Aye. O'Kane. Eighteen's a hearing and ordinance vacating a portion of the alley in the blocks on the by Dace Avenue, Washington Avenue, South Cleveland Street, and South Nicollet Street. <clears throat> Doug and Pam Hesse, PNZ recommends approval. I'll move it. Second. Public hearings now open. Anything? Not yeah, pretty straightforward for us. Okay. Did I get a second on that? I thought Dan did. Did you? Thank you. Try to lean more into the mic. I lean in. <laughs> Passes five zero. Anybody opposed to waiving the statutory rule? I don't know. <laughs> so I'll move second and third or the stat to waive the rule. Second. Scott? Aye. Waters? <clears throat> Aye. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Shaner. Aye. I'll move second and third. Second. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Chainer? Aye. Scott? Aye. Hearing 19 is a hearing and resolution approving construction documents for the South Cecilia Street reconstruct, Reconstruction Project. Public hearing is now open. I'll move it. I'm Second. sorry, I'll move it first. My bad. Second. Public hearing is now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. <laughs> Passes 5-0. Citizen concerns. Are there any citizens in the audience that want to be heard? <clears throat> Seeing none, we'll go to Mr. O'Kane. Really looking forward to break. Um, I'm looking forward to spending some time with family, and I think everybody is right around this season. So <coughs> that's it. That's it. All right. Good for you. Short and sweet. Julie. Well... I'm looking forward to break as well. Um, I'm going to open the Pandora's box and say I'm very happy to see that the water park development agreement has officially begun and that it's out in public. It's been going on for several years. Um, I just want everyone to remember that this is the first step of future development out in that area. The city has acquired several pieces of property there, the 40 three acres where the water park will begin and another 54 acres um, out in that area as well. The 54 acres is intended for some light industrial or some other form of commercial property development. Um, the water park will begin with approximately 10 to 12 acres. I think they're intending on investing 12 to 15 million dollars. It's going to be a very large professional park. Um, with possibly some future plans for other phases. Um, there could be other amenities added. There could be restaurant, food, I mean, hotel, we don't know. But I just want everybody to keep in mind that this is a first step to developing that area 
Um, so that's what the sewer line goes in for. It will service the entire regional area as well as the detention ponds that are going in. So it's super exciting that this group wants to invest in our community. They saw, I think, Facebook posts and things um, out on social media that we would love to have a water park attraction here and the city just was not able to put that in our budget over the years. I have to say my very first CIP in 2020, I opened that book up and I saw programmed out five years in our future, water, what was it called? What do we call it? Um, it was a water park. But it, it was called something else. Aquatic center. Aquatic center was noted. And I was just like, yes, Sioux City's finally going to get a water park. And then they said, no, 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 we're really not getting that. We want to get it, but it's out many years ahead because we can't find the funds to do it. And that continued on every year. And now this group is going to put one in for us. And I'm very happy to have worked with you guys, Joe. I'm sure you'll meet with the news afterwards. It's been a lot of work, but it's been a lot of fun and it's worthwhile. And I look forward to the city doing more business with you in the next years to come and appreciate it very much. It's very exciting news for the city. It really is. And um, <clears throat> I have happy holidays, everyone. Alex. Yeah, no, I wanted to say a couple of things. First and foremost, I wanted to give a shout out to um, the staff and everyone at the Tyson Event Center as well as the Arena Sports Academy. I think that, you know, that specifically with Tyson Event Center, the NAIA National Championship Volleyball Tournament was really exciting. I think it was really, it went smoothly from everything I heard and was able to observe. I made it to about one game and then I was out of commission the rest and just still not feeling well. So, um, but what I saw was really great and I heard a lot of good things um, and a lot of good feedback moving forward. So that's pretty exciting. And then there was also just a tournament that they held in conjunction with the Arena Sports Academy down there, a, a basketball tournament. And I heard that that went well, and really drew in some uh, regional talent and scouts and everyone as well. And I think that's pretty exciting for our area. Um, the more we can do to kind of put those kids on, well, kids, it was high school as well as college students um, uh, on that stage, I think is really exciting for them and something that they'll definitely remember. So I appreciate them working together on that. The last thing that I wanted to mention um, was just that I was gonna share um, some of Julie's excitement for the taking this first step. I think that this is a first formal step and I'm really excited for the future of this. I think that it's gonna open up a, a corridor um, that's really ready for development. I think that it's a really exciting proposal and I just, I want to thank not only Joe and the investors and you individual staff that put in time, but most certainly um, I want to thank uh, Councilwoman Shaner for her dedication to this project because as the investors would probably attest, um, I don't think this project is coming to our community at all um, if it wasn't for Julie's stepping up and um, really having those conversations, continuing the dialogue and willingness to work with both city staff as well as the investors. And um, I, I believe wholeheartedly in giving credit where credit is due. And I, I know that this would not be in our community if it wasn't for her work on that. So I really, really appreciate that because I do think this is an amenity that I have heard about a long time um, in our community that a lot of people are excited about and looking forward to. Um, and so to finally have some of these first steps and be able to work together um, towards making sure that we get it across the finish line is, is pretty, pretty exciting. So anyway, great work. And yeah, happy holidays to everyone. Thank you all. And I, I concur with your remarks, Alex. Um, I just have a few things to share with the mayor and the city council. Uh, first of all, as we close out 2023, I want to thank the mayor and the city council for the progress that we've made this year. We've taken a lot of good steps in the right direction. Um, what I like about this council and the mayor is that we can agree to disagree. We don't become disagreeable, so I really appreciate that. 
It means a lot After to that me. sign deal, when it's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we twisted your arm for we second, third readings, but other than that. Every, every family has that one member, right? I mean. So, so we've, had, we've had a lot of challenges, and I, I think we have, have done our homework, and I think we hit them head on. I think we uh, don't back down, and we, we move forward, and I think we're making a lot of good progress in this city. And it shows uh, a lot of moving parts, but they all come together. So I want to thank uh, the staff. I want to thank the city manager, city attorney, for uh, and the city clerk for all the hard work that they've done this past year. Um, it doesn't just happen easily, and we all uh, work very hard in what we're doing. Um, and I can leave myself out of that if you'd like. I'll just say the council members and the mayor work very, very hard. So uh, I'm looking forward to 2024. I think we have. A lot of challenges ahead of us, but as they say, those challenges can become opportunities. And I think as, if we remain positive, uh, I would like to see uh, actually the hard work we do and a lot of the uh, issues that we have before us, uh, if we could just bring a little more kindness into the council chambers, I would appreciate that. Not that anybody's unkind, but sometimes the emotions run pretty high and um, we always we see those kindness signs out and about in the community and they mean something to me and I've always tried to be respectful and, and civil and I think I come across that way with everyone, including my own colleagues on the city council. So, but it's been a good year overall. I, I, I just wanna stress that and, and we're meeting the challenges. I think the citizens, Sioux Cityans deserve the best and they always deserve better and I think we can do better, and the council is always looking at doing better on all projects. We don't just sit back and say, okay, it's gonna run by itself, it's on autopilot. So thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity. Thank you for, uh, for the Mayor's Youth Commission and swearing in the Mayor Pro Tem, that meant a lot to me. Um, I'm very proud to serve as Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I try to be there at all times when the mayor cannot be there and that's basically my job and it's an easy job because the mayor the mayor shows up for everything which is a good thing so i appreciate that mayor for all that you've done and your leadership uh, like i said we don't always agree um, but we can agree to disagree on items and we just we move forward i don't have to come in here week after week thinking uh oh i wonder what's going to happen today uh, we just we just work through it together. So thank you, thank you. I hope everyone has a safe uh, holiday and a happy new year. And we'll just continue to make the progress we're making. That's all I have. That's pretty much what I was gonna say. So I'll just say have a great holiday season and we'll see you after the first of the year. I move we adjourn. Second. Waters. <clears throat> Aye. Moore. Aye. O'Kane. Aye. Shaner. Aye. Scott. Aye.